What's up everyone, this is Mars Man here, and welcome to Mars Man Gaming. In this video, we break down the biggest gaming news topics of the week, and I can't do this alone. I'm sure you noticed that Hockey is not here today. He's feeling a little bit under the weather, but he's all right. But I do have my boy Langelikill along with me, and he is here to help me get through the biggest news to topics of the week. So, Langelikill, how are we doing today? What's up, everybody? And uh, wishing Hockey a speedy recovery. Yeah, man, we need our we need our comic relief into the into the group chat. He's you know he's well missed here right now, but you know he he gives his best regards, and he will be back. For the next episode and he will definitely give his opinions on what we discussed this week now biggest thing that happened this past week i don't want to jump right into the topics there's a lot of stuff we, we that we were unable to talk about last week's episode but the biggest thing i want to talk about today is the xbox showcase that came that, that actually there's two two shows that were shown there was the first one that occurred on june 12th for 90 ish minutes and then they had an extended showcase that was on june 14th that basically showed off gameplay again as well as discussing with developers some questions that people had um now there's a lot of things shown to this event i think the biggest thing that most people would look at would be starfield starfield had a big part of the show a lot of gameplay showing some uh some you know discussions about the cities that you're going to see the groups that you're going to see um but at the same time there's a lot of other things that were announced for example things like high on life which was made by the creators of rick and morty it's coming out this year Redfall and some gameplay from that. It's coming out next year. Diablo 4, that's going to be coming onto the Xbox consoles as well as PC, which is a pretty big deal. Forza Motorsport had some gameplay footage. Um, they showed how realistic some of the things are, showing some uh, expansions that are coming along with Forza Horizon with the uh, <laughs> with the Hot Wheels uh, expansion. Overwatch 2 has got a trailer. It was officially actually announced to be a multi-plat. It's not going to be an exclusive. Uh, see if these is getting its new season pass grounded full release will be coming in September Persona series is coming to game pass and that includes Persona's 3 4 and 5 which is a pretty big deal uh, We have Warlong uh, Fallen Warrior, which was the made by the creators of Niho 1 and 2 Which is now coming to Xbox, which is also another big title a lot of people were looking at uh, and Riot Games made a collab with Game Pass, allowing for all their game titles to be put onto PC Game Pass, which is uh, big for PC gamers. It could have been bigger if it was on console, and that includes games like Valorant, which is obviously huge. Um, also, the other major announcement was that Kojima officially states that he was working with Xbox to create an exclusive horror game, also known as Overdose. Now, this does not mean that Kojima is only working with Xbox. He came out shortly after to declare that he and Sony are doing pretty well, which I think most people were kind of expecting at that point. But yes, um, now, like I said, there's a lot of things here that were shown. I think the biggest thing that I saw as a, uh, a major like surprise, and obviously with you know, Starfield and all that stuff was big, but um, there's just a lot of these smaller topics that were shown, but... I kind of want to get your feedback or get your opinion about which which announcement from this Xbox showcase were you the most excited about? As in you walked away and you said, wow, that's a pretty big deal. So uh, were there any announcements that you saw that were exciting to you? Um, You know, this showcase, there was a lot in there, but it, it did feel like there at times there was a bunch of fillers uh, mm -hmm. during, during these games. Um, I think the easy answer is Starfield. Um, and if I didn't uh, choose Starfield, I'm cautiously optimistic about Diablo. Um, and I'm probably sounding very foolish putting some optimism in the Diablo group. Um, but Starfield to me is interesting. I mean, we talk, you know, there's so much hype behind it. Um, they did come with some big kind of statements, especially when it comes to like the 1,000 worlds that you can uh, visit. I still don't know how they're going to pull that off, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I did like, you know, it, it just looked like Fallout in space. Um, and it kind of had some aspects. I know people were diving into the trailer. had some aspects of No Man's Sky uh, to it. Um, and again, it, hopefully it doesn't launch like No Man's Sky, um, but becomes kind of a later version of No Man's Sky mixed with some Fallout aspects. I do think, you know, I felt 
pretty good. I don't feel great. I felt pretty good um, with Starfield from what I saw. I know there's a lot of people going back and forth about graphics, but Fallout is not, you know, a, a graphic hub on their on their end anyway. And those are the people mm-hmm. making Starfield. So to me, Starfield number one, Diablo. I think the concept, if they can capture recapture that Diablo environment with the multiplayer aspect, I think is really really cool to go on Xbox. Um, it's just you're afraid about the greediness and the, um, you know, kind of the empty vessel that Diablo has become and, and, and their fans have become really coarse uh, to that. And, and so that's what makes me nervous. But if they can recapture it, I think that Diablo could be a big, uh, a big hit. Yeah, I mean, like, listen, I think the biggest thing, obviously Starfield was such a major showing at this and everyone was itching to see what Starfield was like. And I can agree with you. I think everyone's destroying the fr- the 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 frames per second the fidelity of this game but like guys there's a reason why it's being delayed for for next year right? i mean like that's the thing that i'm looking at like and you in know, my opinion i think it's going to be later next yeah, year yeah and, and I, listen I, be, I think it, will it could be it could be it could not be i mean at the end of the day it could end up being like a end of being half the year right half halfway into 2023 that's a possibility i think a lot of it has to do when when does Breath of the Wild 2 come out? I think that's going to be when they kind of make their decision um, because I think they might adjust. And people are like, well, why the hell would they do that? Breath of the Wild 2 coming out in the middle of the year because they've done that before. They did that with the original Breath of the Wild. I think that they, w- they would be smart. Like Microsoft would be smart to not release Starfield at the exact same time or right before Breath of the Wild 2 because everyone's going to jump into that game instantly. So you kind of want to give some time to kind of let things breathe and I think Starfield kind of deserves its own little spotlight. Like, not saying like, oh, well, hopefully no other game comes out. But like, listen, I think Starfield going up against the Giants that year, I think it's smart to kind of take that into strategy. Just make sure the game comes out, you know, fully, you know, ready to roll. I think that's the big thing that Microsoft needs to do. But like I said, I I didn't really look at the showcase and say, wow, this looks awful. Like, I'm not on that boat. I think I thought the game showed some promise. It showed like a lot of exploration components. It showed a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of move to grow, uh, a lot of things that you could see to grow and to be really interesting. I mean, like the uh, fact that you can me, go it was visit. More, yeah, they they express concepts, right? Because it didn't mm-hmm. wasn't a long gameplay trailer. No, no, it wasn't. There, yeah, there was a lot of like you could see, uh, you know, opportunities during the gameplay. Yeah, and so that's the only thing that I will like push a little bit back. There was a lot of promises made um but what i did see was kind of that fallout in space kind of yeah it, it, it kind of that kind of like was nail on the head if you if you were to say all right well uh people who made fallout what would you think that starfield's gonna be a fallout space you know space version and, and exa- that's exactly what it was it kind of reminded me like you mentioned like outer worlds it was a similar kind of feeling no uh you know no man's sky type of feeling I kind of thought the combats remind me a little bit of like Mass Effect, but in first person. And there are some third person components because the, the combat and people were like, wow, this looks so chunky and slow. Like Mass Effect was like that. You know, Mass Effect had that chunky type of combat that you're not saying Fallout has like that behind walls thing, but like Mass Effect, that's what it was like. It was slow paced. You know, you're moving really slowly, like Shepard's like going around corners on walls and he's shooting like. You can still have a, a combat like that, and it's still going to be enjoyable. So, Starfield look, looks really cool because you can customize a lot of stuff, and and I think a lot of people are going to be really excited to be able to like, you know, go explore with a spaceship of your own. I just really hope they come out with an on like a multiplayer component because then that would be even cooler if you did that. But I'm not sure yet. Um, but the other thing that I thought that was pretty big from the showcase, and maybe I'm sounding like a like a, a homer here, but. You know the persona series as well as a lot of game the game pass looked like phenomenal when you look at the and the biggest thing that xbox showcase does and it feels like they've been doing this for years is to show you that by owning game pass you have now this plethora like the the amount of games they showed and every game is going to be included on game pass essentially and it's like dude like at this point how do you not purchase game pass how do you not like have this if you own an xbox in some way how can you not own Game Pass because of the fact that all these games are coming onto the, the subscription service? And I feel like that's what they, they did very well with this. Now, obviously, you're like, you want to see game, right? That's like the big thing that you want to see. And some of the games they showed were interesting. Like, obviously, Diablo 4, I thought was cool too. Redfall looked interesting. 
Um, I want to see more of it, though. I want to see more of it before I'm just like, well, is this just another back for blood? Or is this another four person squad shooter? Because everyone is making those nowadays. Um, you know, and, and you know, other announcements like Grounded being full release. Like, you know, Grounded kind of was one of those games that like you had some fun if you were with people, but you kind of lost that interest over time because like Are, it, was, it felt like an empty sandbox for so long exactly and so now they're finalized they're finishing it so it's like okay the beta series is over can is this yeah. this full game with a story is going to get me hooked to keep playing and i'm wondering about that i feel like it's a it, it's an interesting concept they did it decently well for what they were trying to do i want to see how it is a lot of people were talking a lot about high on life um, I think it's a goofy game, but I'm sure you'll have a lot of laughs. Like, you know, like playing like a South Park game, you weren't looking to be moved by a story. You're going to probably laugh a lot. And I think that's but what the game kind of sounded like. I will say the South Park games they were good. high standards. Yeah, they had a pretty, they were pretty good for, uh, you uh, know, for a comedy. Like, then that's pretty good. For that, I, listen, I'm fine. I'm, I'll probably pick it up if I can look at some of the stuff that comes with it. I'll definitely pick it up. But going along with some of the themes I said here was... We talked about the positive. We need to talk about the negative. The biggest things that a lot of people said was there was missing groups and games that were not talked about. And when I'm looking at this from my perspective, there is no Halo Infinite. There is no Gears of War. There is no Sinuous Saga. No Ori. Not even to talk about what they're going to do next. That same group that made Ori, what are they going to do next? No Perfect Dark. No My Dreams Have Killed. No Banjo. No Banjo Kazooie that they, people were rumored about. No Avowed. No Fable. No contraband, right? These are all games or possible rumors of games being developed or groups that are making these games. And a lot of them weren't there, right? For a 90 minute showcase, it felt like it was a Bethesda showcase. It didn't feel like it was a Microsoft everybody's here showcase. And that was something that I kind of looked at. And I want your opinion about, you know, do you think that how, what was the biggest disappointment coming from the showcase? Um, and I'll let you talk first, then I'll jump in after. So what do you think was the biggest disappointment that you did not see at the showcase? Well, none of us, we all made bold predictions last week and none of us, mm -hmm. uh, none of us were right. You know, we all were wrong. Um, it was a bit of surprising. And again, you mentioned that Xbox had two showcases and to be missing those groups is a bit surprising. Um, again, I, I made a bold take about Fable coming back from the dead being in this um it was not that's not the most disappointing to me i think the most disappointing is halo um and i'm not saying that they needed to show gameplay or needed to dive deep into the new dlc story um but an announcement i think um the kind of you know what's next on slate mm -hmm. for them um i think wasn't wouldn't be the greatest but it would be good enough um and to just not have any halo at all is interesting to me and a little disappointing. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of in the same boat with Halo. Now, granted, I think just because of the fact we feel we're filming this later in the week, some news they come out that, you know, they, they are going to have like a, a kind of like a mini presentation themselves, like maybe within a few weeks because they are, are and my, my bold predi my prediction was they're going to show off um, the, you know, the, the Battle Royale or Season 3 content and it seems like the battle royale will be uh, basically shown in some capacity or announced of when it's going to release in a few weeks and they're going to have like their own little mini like presentation about like the you know the rest of season two what, what you have to look forward to forge information you know uh this new battle royale stuff so that'll be it looks like in a few weeks so like, maybe they just weren't ready to show off some of these things that they they were planning to do and that's why they weren't there so if I'm not going to say Halo is being a disappointment, I think the, the disappointment for me comes with, and, you know, obviously I made a bold prediction about Banjo-Kazooie, but, you know, no no new major game other than Starfield and Redfall were shown. I think that's probably my biggest thing. Like, you know, you, I know Perfect Dark, that you know, they're having a lot of issues right now with that game. So they're like, they don't like, they're kind of keeping that under the wraps for right now, which is understandable. But Avowed like, is a game that a lot of people were saying, hey, there's going to be a lot of Avowed stuff possibly here because Avowed is a game that's supposedly coming out either next year. Um, and there's not been a single gameplay. It's the only thing we've seen was cinematics. Um, yeah. You know, Ori, I know there's been a lot of weird stuff going on with the, with the group that makes Ori. I thought they um, were done with Ori. 
No, well, well, that, that's the thing. They don't know, like, they didn't know if they were going to continue with that, or at least the new yeah. game from that group, they haven't done anything. Yeah, that's what I The know. biggest I question mark for me was about no Senua's Saga. I mean, last time we saw, uh, you know, Senua's Saga in a way, which is the Hellblade series, they had a really cool, like, actual, like, presentation of the, um, you know, the, uh, the engine and Unreal Engine yeah. 5 being used, and they showed that cutscene where she basically... Yeah was fighting the giant and you're like that was really cool that was really cool looks super realistic and that was the last thing we saw of it we didn't see, now we were expecting to see some gameplay like you walking around and fighting people i think that would have been really cool but that wasn't even shown at all so i felt like that was kind of something that was really disappointing um let's move on though to the next major topic of discussion halo infinite halo infinite came out with a new update this week they basically were fixing a lot of the bugs that they had, a lot of with the UI. So kind of loading screens are going to be better. It's going to be loading a lot faster. The the screen will be completely different. So now you're not staring at the same void in the in the ring. It'll be now the season two kind of logos will be shown there. Uh, the biggest updates here though is the vehicles got a much needed health boost. Like for example, unfortunately Hockey's not here to see it, but the Banshee, the Wasp are now getting major upgrades in health. So they're not dying instantly like sometimes a banshee just dies and it just can't move at all um vehicles in general are getting a health increase and the other big thing is that they're adjusting things in ranked modes so if in order for you if you never played halo before it's a brand new thing you need to play around 25 non-social matches before you can jump in the rank essentially what they're doing this for is to stop spam or bot or smurf accounts from joining ranked because they obviously like if they want to some some sweaty player wants to try to dominate you know newer players by creating a brand new account you know that they're gonna they're gonna dominate because they have a new account that doesn't have a csr ranking so essentially they're stopping that from happening by playing 25 games they're gonna get a feeling like either you're gonna suck for 25 games in a row to have a really bad csr rating or you're just lying and this is an actual account that you are playing and you're gonna obviously play well and they'll get our adjusted rating so it's almost like the ranking systems are going to be more adjusted based on actual skill rather than be based on you know some smurf accounts and lastly uh, after all these updates the store prices went up it was almost like they're trying to adjust based on inflation like inflation matters into this gaming store bundles um so they kind of got some flack for that but you know the big question i ask you and obviously this is the first what they call the content drop pod update the next one obviously they're, they're going to be doing these every single month to kind of add, fix some of the problems as well as add new things um now there's a lot of leaks and rumors and this is kind of just brand new it came out like literally within the day um that they uh, have uh, shown a lot of new things coming to the game um now this is like i said these are take these with a grain of salt these are these are leaks so you have no idea if these are true or not but essentially what they are showing is that um within this season there's going to be a lot of new game modes that are going to be talked about Obviously, they think that Forge is actually might arrive earlier than expected, which is obviously a big deal. Um, there is, you know, this new Battle Royale may not be coming until, you know, it might it's not coming out season three, it seems like. It seems like it's going to be a later season. Um, but they also did a possible leak, a rumor was that they're not going to get a lot of playable elites, but there's going to be playable something else. It's just possibly looking like playable brutes, which is going to get everyone, I'm sure crying and moping or something like that but uh and the other one is that they did show that you will be seems like facing off against the endless in a new and when they come out with the new story dlc the endless are going to be a thing which was kind of realistic because the endless is the name of the of the new story part yeah. of this of this campaign so it just officially basically said yep that trademark that joseph staten had mentioned it's not BS. It's going to be, that's going to be the next part of the story um, is the endless. Um, so after all this stuff, what do you think is the biggest thing that Halo needs to do with their updates? I mean, the major next major update, what do you want to see addressed? I mean, I just went over a bunch of things on this update, talk about some rumors. What do you think needs to be the biggest thing that Halo Infinite focuses on to, in the next major content update? Well, I mean, we know about this bunch of different stuff in the works. It depends on, again, getting a team assembled and getting Halo kind of in front of the eight ball. It always, for the longest time, they've been behind it. Um, 
behind the eight ball trying to catch up. And it feels like they're getting closer and closer to finally being able to be a live service. This is a little bit better work um, this this past update um, because it didn't take so damn long to, mm-hmm. to do, um, which shows at least some good signs for the Halo Infinite team. Um, to me, and again, I, I just don't see them doing it, but I wish they would. I wish we go back to legitimate rankings um for online play i i really love the military graded uh online uh rankings that they used to do in the old halo games um Mm -hmm. having the cool symbols having the cool stuff like that um was something that i always liked um for whatever reason in today's society of video games they don't like doing that um because they they don't want people bashing on each other but again at some point you you know it comes with the territory right like you know yeah i mean like come on appease everybody um but like that's something that i think make is is a cool thing for halo and um i'm hoping in the next update they do that for content i mean of course the campaign right you want to see the new campaign how about co-op campaign how about again non-multiplayer campaign co-op um, you know, like, why is that so damn difficult to do mm-hmm. when you see like games like Far Cry, um, that you, you know, even though it's not perfect by far, uh, but you could still play with each other and stuff like that. So I, I do wish, you know, I like that Halo's fixing things quicker. Um, there's still some things that they can definitely work on. I mentioned a couple of them. Another one is, you know, how have they not fixed stockpile yet? How has that game mode not been adjusted yet? I, 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 yeah, I don't understand that either. I, and I, I think that they still need to learn how to be a live service game. I mean, like, granted, go. and I think a lot of rumors are saying that they are still learning how to do that. And it, it, you don't have to leak anything to know that. I, I think you can you just watch, it. just watch yeah. it straight on and say six months of a season is an example of not really necessarily knowing the process to be a live service and they just weren't ready for it. And I think live this live service term is an easy way out for people to say, this game isn't ready yet. So we're turning into a live service so that we can add stuff as we go, keep working on it as we continue. And you can see that with a lot of games. I mean, like we're, I just did a review on Marish Ricker's battle league battle league seems like, and they, they're becoming a live service game. It makes sense because there is lack of content, there's lack of stuff, lack of characters. And it seems like they use that as the way of saying, hey, we're going to keep adding stuff and, you know, we're going to keep building this thing. And in some cases, I mean, a lot of ways I've seen games that start out as being a live service and end up getting better because they do have more time. But it's just like, as a fan of a game, you're just like, I want the game to be full and then you add DLC content to keep me playing rather than start out with nothing and then as i keep as i take breaks and return back that's when stuff comes in like now granted we've been playing here at marshman game we've been playing halo off like we've been playing halo off and been streaming halo off and but it is kind of annoying because a lot of halo fans do take breaks they jump off to play other games and then they come back like yeah. you don't want that's not necessarily a healthy base because if they're leaving who knows if they'll come back right that's yeah. essentially that's not really a good business plan because your job is to keep the customers here. Don't let them leave, and then then they might go find something else to go play. So, I don't think necessarily that's the biggest thing that they you know they they're shining right now. And now I think I can agree with you. I think they need to work on adding new maps. In my opinion, I feel like yeah. one of the coolest rumors they came out with was that the battle royale will be a combination of two classic Halo maps together. And I can tell you that I think it's going to be Blood Gulch and Valhalla combined. Like will be what the battle royale map will look like they said a map from halo 2 and a halo map from halo 3 i'm like okay blood gulch and valhalla seem like they're identical in a lot of the key concepts they look the same it's going to be on a halo ring itself i wouldn't be surprised um do you need to add more maps i mean there's the rumor and it seems like everyone's saying that guardian is going to return um is going to return to you know halo is going to be a halo infinite map and a content drop update that's coming soon if it wasn't the one we just had, it better well be the next one. Like, I think yeah. you add another map to get people excited and say, hey, we're adding stuff. That will get people back to playing. Like, seeing new game modes, seeing maps, that's what gets people really hyped to play and return back to the game. Not 
No, I mean, obviously, UI fixes are great and fixes yeah. to like the you know but connection you know, stuff. I always got to take shots too. Um, I am the anti microtransaction guy, and them being grubby uh, gluttons with that price tag in those stores, they're creeping back into that territory of being. They're they're reaching almost EA territory. There's no reason for that. There's no reason for that. Relax with that stuff. Just like you know, and I, I said this a long time ago. Imagine if you had earnable credits like the regular way, or or even better yet, if you don't want to make earnable credits for every game, make it for challenges. Like make it so that you are pushing people to say, "Let's complete some challenges to get earnable credits," and then that'd be their way of of buying everything out. Right? It's their way to grind for challenges to get them. Like, and you don't have to make it like a lot. I mean. Granted, I think what you should do is make challenges worth each one worth a hundred hundred credits or something like that. Because then, then you can charge that nine the nineteen hundred and be like, all right, well, if you complete all the challenges and there's a close to like fifteen or like twenty in there, essentially, like you're unlocking, you're gonna get all the credits you want to buy these crazy ass bundles. Like that, that'd be such a, a smart. It's like using it's like Dave and Buster's using Dave and Buster's dollars, right? That's yeah. essentially what you're doing. It now, granted, I, I granted, it's I it's better, better than what they have, but yeah. I would still rather it's, them it's not make everything earnable. But yeah, yeah, but it's better than what they have, which is they don't give you that option and yeah. you have to pay out of pocket. Yeah. So I, listen, there's a lot of stuff that can add. I think content is the biggest thing for me. Um, but little things like the store, those are the easy. Grubbiness, like, the grubbiness. Yeah, you you can lower your you made you made made the money that you needed for to to, to retain what you did for Halo Infinite. You've already earned that. Like that's earned. You sold all those games. The microtransactions are gonna get you killing. Season passes are gonna get you money. All that stuff piled up already. Like you've already earned that. The question is, can you now decrease the amount of money that you're grubbing? Because you're gonna get more people turned off if you don't. So I'm just saying this as a content creator. I know I'm not a game developer, but I can just tell you right now, people are annoyed but with, with with what's going on. Um, let's jump to the next topic though. Diablo. You mentioned this in the Xbox showcase, Angela Kill. Um, now Diablo Immortal is the one we're gonna talk about. And that was the mobile game. That was like the famous uh, you know, first off, they hit the lowest user rating on Metacritic in the history of Metacritic, which is a 0.2 out of 10. Um, basically, uh this game was announced a few years ago at BlitzCon. Uh, I know a lot of content creators kind of made fun of this event and obviously made fun of the game act man being the one of the most famous of it. Uh, basically at this event, you know, there was a, basically a time where they announced that this new Diablo game, which everyone was hyped to just play a new Diablo game. All of a sudden Diablo oh, Immortal. Diablo yeah. They're like Diablo Immortal. And everyone was like, Oh my God, a fourth Diablo game. And they're like, it's for your mobile devices. And they're like, are you, and everyone's just confused because they're like, is there like a mirror of this? Is there? And then that was the most famous quote was, is this a out of season April Fool's joke? And everyone was like dying and they, you, it's bad because they are it automatically lost a crowd. Like the, the instance that happened and essentially That's they, the famous, you guys have phones too. Yeah. It was like you guys, and they kind of were like resentful to the, to the fans, their own fans and saying like, what well, you guys don't have phones. You guys don't like, like yeah. you guys don't like playing mobile games. Like, Guys, you're you're at a PC convention. You don't think these people like would rather just play a PC game? Like it was just stupid. So so if, essentially they finally those people finally got what they wanted. A Diablo 4 has been announced and it's not only coming to PC but coming to Xbox. Um so the question I have to you is are you excited the fact that new Diablo game is coming to Xbox and are you actually going to play it? Well, I did. I said it was one of the more intriguing things uh, that I saw, but like you mentioned, Diablo Immortals is the worst user score Metacritic game. And these are the same people working on the next installment of Diablo. So it's really the concept, the thought, like, man, like the world looks big. We can play with, you know, friends, um, you know, the customization like it feels like oh man this could be really cool but then you have to remember who's making it you know so it's like with this moving to xbox will they have better leadership will they be more 
motivated? Would they be less grubby is the question. Are they going to be less, you know, trying to pillage and rape your wallets? If they are, then I am very excited because I feel like this is a game that uh, you could play with friends and have a lot of fun and play long hours with. Um, similar to what it was back in the day for Diablo. They had a huge fan base. Mm -hmm. um, they still have a large fan base, but that fan base is becoming... It, it just feels like a lot of Madden fans. They're tired. Yeah, they're they're like tired they're just and tired yeah. and numb to the BS. Yeah, um, and, and that's the concern. And what's that, what's frustrating is it's kind of like you know, and you may, said it best, like the Madden fans, and a lot of them are like people that just continue to buy the games because just they're fans like, of the series, and they're yeah. just like they're like they don't want to see the series die, but they just they're not happy like, with it, what they're it's playing. Dead. Like they're just like they're like they're just trying to keep it on life support shelves, essentially. Like yeah. That, and, and and it's like it's unfortunate because Diablo is a storied franchise and it's you see where the state that it's in now now I I'm excited because I want to see what this game is like and I, and I have a I have a gaming PC obviously but I'm not really a PC gamer where I like know how to use the, the mouse and keyboard efficiently enough to be competitive so for me it's like I'm using my my controller modded to like work with PCs essentially not modded but like you know a program to keep it to make it work right so so for me the fact that this is coming on console now gives me like another a avenue of playing a legendary franchise and, and playing it well so um i'm excited to play it i want to test it out i uh, hopefully it's not as bad as what everyone thinks it's going to be so i'm waiting to see what that's going to be like um but let's jump to the next one this is another big topic from the Xbox Showcase. Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 was showed off. It, it kind of gave us a little cinematic of the new uh, Junker Queen. Uh, and basically, this will be releasing. And it was kind of announced here that it's going to be releasing October 4th. And it's going to be a free-to-play game, open beta, that's going to be open to everyone. Multi-platform, PlayStation, Xbox, PC. Everything is going to be available for it. Um, now, some things that they are changing, the game this, the game itself is changing to be a 5v5, um, and obviously having all, all the same characters from the previous game, with some new ones, as well as a lot of maps from the previous installment added on, and just adding new ones to the mix. Um, now, the thing I wonder is that when this game, when the official Microsoft Blizzard acquisition does happen, I wonder if there will be any changes uh, to this relationship with Overwatch and being a multi-plat, um, or even being new like content, being a limited or a timed exclusive to Xbox or not, it'd be an interesting question. But the big question I have, and the you know, I, I want to get your point on this: Are you concerned that Overwatch will be released as a free-to-play game, or are you still excited for its release? It feels like it's been forever since Overwatch has made a return. Yep. Um, but I am very nervous um, just because of the long gap. Overwatch 1 was such a phenomenon at the time. Um, I don't know if it's going to carry that same excitement this time around. Yep. Um, that's my one of my concerns. And my second one is, like you mentioned before, when you hear the word free to play, uh, sirens are going off in my head, as in this is going to be microtransaction to death. And I know a lot of people coming back and you'll probably say, you know, it doesn't affect the actual gameplay. Um, so you can go out there and still compete even with someone throwing how much, whatever amount of money that is. And that's true. But, you know, like, it's kind of annoying how they don't allow you to, you know, grind to get cool stuff. Like, you know, the only way to do it is to reach into your damn wallet and spend whatever the damn currency is for the game. Um, or those, you know, those lotteries, you know, selections. Yeah, loot boxes. To, yeah, loot box. Try to get these items, um, and, and it's it's just kind of annoying. It, it just takes away from, you know, like you really think that's cool, and you play a lot of the game. You should get an opportunity to get that, right? Mm -hmm. Without opening up your wallet for extra, you know, ten dollars here and ten dollars there. And I wouldn't have problems if they were like one dollar, two dollar stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. Five dollars max. Right, because that stuff adds up. But when it's like ten dollars, twelve dollars, you know, going over that for for cosmetics is insane. And that's what I feel like this is going to be a lot about. 
Yeah, I, I, listen, I think that whenever you see free-to-play, it, it does not necessarily bode well. Now, granted, uh, there are a lot of free-to-play games that are doing well. And don't get me wrong, you know, Apex Legends is, is still rocking it. Now, I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about the seasons. Still doing well. Fortnite's still doing well. You know, I think that a free-to-play model done right is effective. Overwatch is a, it was a phenomenon and still is. I mean, you're looking at all, all the places around the world. It's still doing well, but what this tells me about this game is that free to play for Overwatch 2 with a lot of struggles seems like this should not have been a second installment. It could have just been an expansion or a continuation of the game. If it was a free to play game, you should just announce that and then say, all right, well, next season of Overwatch is dropping with content and make it a big release and then have it that way versus it's free to play game. You're saying it's Overwatch 2. There's not really there's obviously new characters and new maps but like you could have opened this up as being just another season but you know they're not selling it for another 60 bucks so i i guess you can call it overwatch 2 and just make it free downloadable but what it tells me is that there's not going to be a campaign there's not going to be a lot of these key components that we're thinking of it's probably just going to be an updated next gen version of overwatch 1 with some new maps new characters and a new version of the game being a 5v5 so I'm excited to play it. I was a big fan of World Watch 1. We all played it, all the Marsman crew. This is before the content, before the channel was even made. But we played a lot of that game. We had a lot of fun and competitive. Um, it does, does get you angry, but it was yeah, a fun was, game when playing. There were some playing. real toxic environments in the Overwatch 1 era. Yeah, there were. And, and, and you know, that's the one thing that I'll, I'm sure Hockey can attest to this a lot. Being He was like the Grandmaster. Uh, he got the Grandmaster ranking. I mean, we, we were pretty good, but we were not to his level. Um, but he, yeah, but he can definitely attest to that. And I he, I had this question ready for him because I knew that he would have a lot to say. So I will definitely have to ask him again when he's back on. Um, let's jump to the last segment here. And this is going to focus on Netflix. Now, Netflix, uh, you know, is known for greenlighting a lot of different projects uh, at a time. And sometimes these projects would come out really well. Like Squid Games is like a rock hit that, you know, they're coming out with a second season and everything. And I'm all excited to watch that. But at the same time, they do greenlit a lot of stuff that is dumpster fires. Now, they're jumping into the gaming, uh, the gaming shows and TVs race and... We've seen them do this before with anime, like Cowboy Bebop was a Netflix original and God help that show because the great anime and damn what they did to that was horrifying. What next on the list for them is greenlighting three new gaming shows. We have Sonic Prime, which is an animated show, Resident Evil, which is coming out this year. And there's been a lot of trailers and a lot of people have mixed like, oh, this is going to be really good or... I have no idea what it's going to be like. And lastly, and this is a brand new one, Castlevania. Um, this is following in the story of Simon Belmont's, uh, I think it's Belmont or Belfort's son. Um, I, I can't say his, I don't know his first name. I'll have that here. But his, his follows his son. So it's a continuation of the Castlevania story. And it's going to be animated as well. I, there's no live action. Thank God. Because I, I can already tell that would have been horrible if it was live action. But the big question I have for you here um, is, firstly, which of these shows do you think is going to be awful? Um, and which one do you think is going to be decent? This is a hard one. I, Netflix is... Uh, I give them credit for trying some of these fan-favorite video games and anime and stuff like that. I do give them credit for that. Um, a lot of things are hit and miss, right? I, I think, to me, Witcher is a success... Mm -hmm. um cowboy bebop is a disaster um and so like you kind of get that but your question on which one if i was a betting man which one is awful you know i really hope it's not but i feel like i feel like castlevania has a good chance of being awful unfortunately and uh that's another fan favorite um, now, the one thing I do think it could save it is the anime, like you said. If it was live action, that would be my easy bet. Mm -hmm. um, but that one, to me, is going to be awful. Um, and which one's going to be good out of the last two? I want it to be Resident Evil, but I will say Sonic. Um, I think there's like a pretty good 
you know, Sonic love going on right now. They're making that new open world game. The movie was a success. Um, this is an anime, so it, you know, if it was live service, I'd be more nervous. Um, I have a feeling that, you know, Sonic might surprise people and be pretty good, but I do hope Resident Evil because Resident Evil's had a bunch of just not just awful. So, They've had two so such awful low stuff. average to awful adaptations. And <laughs> I really do. Resident Evil is such a famous game uh, and series that someone's got to get it right at some point. Yeah, I mean, I to be honest, I think the one that's going to be the worst is going to be Sonic, to be honest with you. I think I just saw a trailer of it. and I was like, this is going to be super animated. Um, it's going to come off to me like a kid show, to be honest. I think that's how animated Which it's going to get. It could work, is what I I'm think saying. I, it could I, work. It might I not be it, like yeah. it won't be great for me. Great, but yeah. like, I, I think, listen, I think, and I kind of ask you, I'm going to ask you this question too. To say which is the best to worst, and I'll I'll say it first because I'll add on my answer. The best one I think is probably gonna be Resident Evil. I mean, generally when they stick to the base concept that zombies are about to kill you and you're killing zombies and trying to survive, that stuff has been pretty solid when it comes to the origin story of some of these things. And as long as they stick to the characters being consistent. Like they came out with that recent Resident Evil movie yeah, that Raccoon put City, which Raccoon, they stayed they very Raccoon close City. to the story, but the characters the characters were, were completely off, and uh, that was that was like dis just disheartening. Like I think uh, Redfield was was like like he was closer to his character, and then you have um, Leon who was a complete like dumbass that didn't know what the heck he was yeah. doing. And I now granted in the games like in the original s series original story the first one leon's like a rookie so like he's yeah you know he's a rookie but he's not dumb like he's not like an yeah, idiot they made him like dumb. He, he's just like he's a he's a, a moron like yeah and it was yeah. just like like no like leon's not a moron he's just a rookie that's like innocent and then as by resident Evil 4 he's no longer that rookie anymore he's like a trained like he's a trained dude and that's why he's so good in that game is because he's not a rookie anymore but they ruined his character and they made it like i don't want to see this leon ever again even though like the whole premise was that they wanted to build the story back up and kind of continue it to be like covering the major games again and that was like the what so i think that this has a chance of being good as long as they stick to what the characters are in the in the movie or the, i mean the game story i think next up and this may surprise people is castlevania to be honest having cartoons or having it be an anime based style of, of a show a lot of times does pretty well i mean because you kind of have a lot more leeway your funding is a lot easier to manage because anime or just drawing like style just cartoons you have a lot more to work with at that point and and you know you can use your money wisely versus animated and also live action you have to be really smart with how you use the money and clearly halo the tv series shows you how to and how to not use your use your funding um but i think a, a cartoon using castlevania would be smart and on top of that it's a brand new story i mean granted i wasn't big into the castlevania story games but um i think the fact that you're continuing on simon uh, Bel belfort's uh you know his son after him like that's something new and i think people kind of might be intrigued by it Sonic the animated series Sonic Prime this was not the first time Sonic has ever had a show before and every time they've done a show on Sonic other than the most recent movie it's been awful like it's been gross and just looking at the trailer I I like this seems like a animated show that just like that just seems like it's too it's too like childlike for me like it seems like it's too goofy like you know have and granted i know sonic the hedgehog is not some serious you know person um but you kind of have to make it like interesting so that the gamers who let's be honest sonic sonic fans the original sonic fans are like our age older than us so it's like you know if you want to try to bring in that audience the gaming audience you should make it so kid like and i get it maybe they're trying to jump on that bandwagon that these young kids who are watching the new sonic the hedgehog movie are like this is awesome I want to see more Sonic, and maybe that's why they're making that Netflix show. But I think you try to appeal to as many people as you can. And Sonic is not some adult game anyway. So, like, if 
by you sticking to the story and you stick to the characters, essentially you're working for the gaming community as well as kids who just want to see Sonic the Hedgehog. So I think yeah, that's my uh, best listen, or worst. But you what's asked yours? The question on which one will be good. I don't think any three are gonna be good. They're great. It's yeah, they're not gonna be great. They're just gonna be like horrible, not horrible, and this is dumpster. Like that like that's like yeah. so if you're like, giving me your your three in order, best or worst, yeah. three, which one's your best I mean, one? Best, which I'd probably think average. Mm -hmm. And so I will go Sonic average. Um I will go Resident Evil average. I'm hoping average. And I think Castlevania will be bad. Um <laughs> I hope all three are successful, but you know, with Netflix, Netflix, it's usually two out of it's usually two yeah. out of three are bad. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you get one of them that are that that can stick for a while. Yeah. No, I feel you. Last question. This is kind of just a fire one here. New info says that there is a new sequel to Game of Thrones with Kit Harrington reprising his role as Jon Snow. The question is, do you think this show will be good? And uh, I'll give my hot take here. Find me better writers, and the show will be fine. What do you think? There's so much that I need to know before I, I can feel confident about my answer. Um, because, like, I don't know what world we're entering at this point and how far later from the end of Game of Thrones are we. Um, but I agree, you know, they were such great characters and... Game of Thrones ended and it soured so many people that um, I wish they could, you know, bring it back to life a little bit. Uh, the characters that, that are there. Again, we only know about Jon Snow. We don't know what's happening with everybody else. Um, but I definitely caught my attention. But it just feels like it's so far away that that I need more information. I feel you. Hopefully my boy Jon Snow doesn't get ruined. Um, but that's gonna be it for the show, guys. There, like, is we, it gonna just be him in the wilderness? Like, if yeah, that's the show, just, then I don't it's know. Gonna how... be, that's it's and, gonna be Logan. It's gonna be like the the movie Logan, but just Jon Snow, just in the wild. Oh like, God. I don't um, know about that one. Uh, let's find out. But uh, listen, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. But like I said, guys, we had a packed show today. Hockey couldn't make it uh, for this one because he's feeling the weather. But like I said, I really appreciate everyone coming out to watch us. This is the Mars Band Gaming News. We talk about the biggest gaming news topics of the week. We do this every week. So please, if you missed out, you can always watch the previous ones to kind of get caught up. Or you can always watch the new one and we will discuss the biggest news of the week. But thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And hit that notification bell to be, knowed, uh, to be told when we do our streams as well as new videos are dropped. So thank you guys for watching. This is Mars Band from Mars Band Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys.